Hey, Gary Hoover here. Today I've got another book review for you, and I'm real excited about this one today. You know, I have over 50,000 books, and I love books, and I'm always getting new books and looking at new things, and, and I like so many of them. People ask me, what's your favorite book? I'm saying, oh, don't even try. That's like asking some I've seen a million movies what their favorite movie is. That's just too tough. But there are some books that I really think, man, this is one of the best books I've ever owned. And one of those books is this book called The Universal Principles of Design by Lidwell, Holden, and Butler. This book came out a few years ago, and I fell in love with it immediately. I reviewed it on my blog, a, a typed blog, not a video blog like this. And then just recently I found out, oh, they've done an updated edition. They've added a whole much more, more principles. The first one had, I think maybe the first one had 100, and the new one's got 125 principles. And so I had Amazon rush me a copy, and I just got it. This is a perfect time to talk about it. I'm interested in design, design broadly defined. So the design of cars, the design of um, nice um, whatever glassware, my dad was in the glassware business, the design of uh, video cameras, like the one I'm looking at right now, the design of computers, of computer products, like all the beautiful Apple products, the design of retail stores, what goes on in a well-designed store like a Target or a container store or a crate and barrel, but also the design of organizations the design of methods, of how things are done, of thinking through things. Even, I like the design of spreadsheets and thinking through what's the best, most efficient way to make all this work. I have a lot of books about design, and a lot of them are really about what I call industrial design, how to design a nice uh, coffee mug or a, an office chair or something. It's great stuff. And the great industrial designers, Raymond Lowy and Henry Dreyfus and all those men and women, um, I love studying them. This is one of the few books that goes beyond that. It's just not just about designing objects, although it includes it, but really kind of how you think through anything you might design, anything you might lay out. And it's got these different principles that are, boy, it's just a, a feast of new ideas and new way of seeing things. Because a lot of these principles are ones you're not going to have heard of. Some of them you will say, oh, I think I heard about that. Some of you are like, wow, that's wholly new to me. At least that was the way I reacted to it. Their subtitle here on the book is 125 Ways to Enhance Usability, Website Design, Home Page Design, to Enhance Usability, Influence Perception, Increase Appeal, Make Better Design Decisions, and teach through design. These, this is just like this wild trip through these 125 ideas that go from one page to the next. They may seem kind of unrelated to each other, but they're all in this general realm of design. I picked a few here to mention to you. So, okay, so here they talk about chunking. And chunking is how you take information and break it into big blocks so that people can better understand it. So if you've got a thousand things to say, we say, okay, I'm going to say, Three big chunks. Each one contains 333 things, but so it's creating chunks. So each of the 125 principles is a two page spread. It says chunking, nice, easy to read title because the book is well designed. And then it defines it a technique of combining many units of information into a limited number of units or chunks so that the information is easier to process and remember. It then has a medium length, three, four, five paragraphs, more detailed description, examples, maybe a little history where the idea came from. It has references. So if you want to study that phenomenon or that design approach in more detail, here's some books to read or something. And then there's examples, almost always nice visual examples of chunking. And they may show an unchunked information and chunked information. They use that same approach over and over through the whole book. So what's the next one I marked? Forgiveness. Well, we talk about forgiveness. You assume you've done something bad to me and I'm going to forgive you for it, or vice versa. No. Forgiveness in design, definition. Design should help people avoid errors and minimize the negative consequences of errors when they do occur. So your design's got to be forgiving of the user. It's not like, well, you stupid idiot, you hit the wrong shopping cart button and ordered this item that you didn't plan on ordering it. It's your problem. We're going to ship it to you anyway. And the UPS will get rich taking it to you and bringing it back and taking it to you and bringing it back. No, you've got to be forgiving. And they give examples, concrete, visual, easy to understand examples that relate to your life. That you'll see, oh, I see what they mean. 
nudge, nudge, a method for predictably altering behavior without restricting options or significantly changing incentives. Sounds complex, but you read it, you understand it. Best of all, the illustration. So in the Amsterdam airport, this is a famous case study. It's been written up. I've seen it several times talked about it. I've never seen a picture of it in the urinals, in the men's rooms. They put a fake fly or, or an art that looks like a fly down in the middle of the urinal. And apparently it turns out that men aim for the fly. And they reduce the amount of um, fluids that missed the urinal by 80% by putting that fly there, by saying, go here. <laughs> pretty crazy, I know, but cool stuff. The red effect, now that's pretty cool. Women in red dresses, whether they want to or not, are giving off a signal that they're fertile. <laughs> and maybe babies in the future, you know? And, and, and it's also, on the other side, men in the right kinds of reds, show a dominance. And they did some studies where sports teams that wore their red uniforms had a higher victory, a higher winning percentage when they wore red. You know, and some big statistical study. Oh, I gotta be careful about believing all those statistical studies, but it's an interesting effect. And if you wanna learn about it and think about it, you can read about it here. Serial position effects. This was a new one on me. And I got this new book. If it was an old book, I'd forgotten it. A phenomenon of memory in which items presented at the beginning and end of a list are more likely to be recalled than items in the middle of a list. I'm a big list maker. The minute I saw that, I knew it was true. I knew it was true. I did a to-do list today. And I can tell you what's at the top of the list and what's at the bottom of the list. In the middle, it gets fuzzy. Interesting. Oh, and this one's just a hoot. Visuospatial resonance, some of the words are a little heavy. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the, here the, uh, the, the text is going to help much. A phenomenon in which an image achieves optimal clarity due to resonance between the spatial frequency of the image and the observer's distance from the image. I think, I got to read the rest here. I just got the book, haven't read it all. I think what they're saying is when the lines are drawn closely together and everything, it's something you need to look at close. When the lines are far apart, the frequency of the image components, then you see it from further away, but not near up. Guess it makes sense, but the illustration is wonderful because what it is when you stand back and look at it is it should look to you like, if the camera's working and everything, a picture of Marilyn Monroe. However, the closer you get, it changes. If I can hold it out there, you get close enough. Uh, here, I'll bring it around. It should look like a picture of Albert Einstein. Uh, maybe. Might not work on the, there he is, there he is. It's funny, the camera doesn't pick it up quite the same as a human eye. Well, in any case, <laughs> my little experiment there may not have quite worked on that last one. But I can assure you, when I hold it here, that is definitely Albert Einstein, and I would never dream that it's Marilyn Monroe. Now, I hold it eight feet away from me, as you can clearly see. It's Marilyn. 125 thought-provoking ideas that relate to, if not every aspect of your life, lots and lots of different aspects. And, man, it'll just provoke your mind. Things like the 80, excuse me, the 80-20 rule, uh, the rules of redundancy, priming, Occam's razor, modularity, defensible space, affordance. That's a very cool concept. I won't go into it here. Just a gold mine. I urge you to get this book and enjoy it. This is Gary Hoover, and I'll see you later.